our vote on accepting a separation of Charlie Sheldon. I, I feel pretty confident that if I make that motion now, it's going to fail in a two to one position. I will, however, make the motion now to rescind our vote on the separation of Charlie Sheldon. Right. Lacking a second, it seems very clear that it's going to die. I have spent the last day and a half talking with staff members here about Charlie Sheldon. I spent the last two and a half years not doing that on purpose because it's hard for staff people to sort of evaluate their boss effectively without seeming to be snipey or, or even be honest. I told Charlie Sheldon, I've also told Jim and Scott on numerous occasions, and I tell everybody that wants to hear it, I don't mess with Charlie's staff. It's executive director staff. The executive director lives and dies based on his staff. The staff do what he's asking them to do, he succeeds to keep his job. If he doesn't do it, he fails, he loses his job. Staff and I have not been talking about this. Yesterday, though, given the situation that I was personally faced with to understand how we could possibly rush to judgment to end <coughs> the employment of Mr. Sheldon at this point with zero public process, I, I had to go find out why. So I did. <coughs> After nine hours of conversation in the last two days, I'm even more confident that my position was right one two weeks ago, and I would offer to anybody to try to convince me differently at this point, because every one of those conversations ended up in a positive position for Mr. Sheldon. Now, I will say that staff were honest with me, and I appreciate that. You have no idea how important that is to me, so I can stand here today me, sit here and look you all in the eye and say that everything I've heard from every staff member seemed to be honest and heartfelt and I appreciate that. But I agree with Mr. Lipsovich, his nickname is Sipa, my Sipa. Deckhands don't run the boat. Deckhands don't get to decide who their skipper is. And the three of us up here do. I feel that I've lost confidence in this organization. I told Jim and Scott privately, I've lost confidence in our commission. And I've done that because of something that was done very publicly, and that was to ask for the resignation and then accept the separation of Mr. Sheldon as our executive director. That is not good governance, it's not good public process. I do not understand how it's possible we can spend months in a public process showing all of our candidates across town and around the county, do you like this person, do you like this person, do you don't like this person, and yet find it so very easy to on a Saturday ask for and then accept the resignation. Who knew about that? Surprise to me. I was criticized for talking to the press about that. But how many of you here that might have been here two weeks ago would have known that on Tuesday of two weeks ago we were going to vote to end the the uh, employment of Charlie Sheldon at this court? The answer is none. It wasn't on our agenda. It wasn't a public process at all. We didn't meet about it. I can tell you that. That's not a so long. We didn't meet about that. We didn't meet to discuss <clears throat> as a commission the terms of separation. We met individually. Charlie seemed to be okay with it because he felt he lost the support of his commissioners, or at least two of them. He probably acted in haste. He didn't fight for his job. And you know, I would say that's probably because he didn't want to put us through this mess. And I, I, I will be accepting the blame of some in this room, and certainly many who are in this room, of creating a, a, a further mess, of, of creating an ugly situation out of what has happened so far. But I believe in governance. I really do. And this is not why I'm here. I am not in this room to have ridiculous discussions like this because this is not what I signed up for. I did not sign up to have stupid conversations that were done <coughs> or, or about things that we did in haste without public process. There was a way to end Charlie Sheldon's work here if we wanted to and we didn't do it. We failed. All three of us have failed. We responded too quickly. We didn't we didn't act thoughtfully, and I don't see how anybody that lives 
in this county that we are supposed to represent slow, deliberative, careful processes to think about what we're doing. How can we hold our heads up when we walk out of this room and say, we've done that for you? When in, in, in the case of something so significant, we fail. There are a lot of little decisions we make. I voted no to support putting water on this mitigation project we've got going on. That didn't even make the papers, right? It's a 2-1 vote, and people make a big deal out of 2-1 votes. <clears throat> but, but this is huge. It's not a little thing. I'm not okay with it. I won't be okay with it. After all the conversations that I've had with the people that work here, I'm even more not okay with it. We're supposed to be in charge of what's going on here, right? And the executive director is supposed to be doing what we want him to do. And just because he can't get all three of us to agree, it's not a failure in my eyes. If we had three old votes and everything, what is that telling the public? It's telling the public that somebody's talking to us behind the scenes. We're not doing enough business out in front of the public. Two one votes show, show the public that they can have confidence that we're going to sit out here and deliberate over things that they might care about. Just because they don't show up doesn't mean they don't care. Just because they do show up, it doesn't mean this is the only people that do care. I'm not I'm not gonna win my choice here. I'm not I'm not gonna <clears throat> I'm not gonna get Charlie back. I don't know if you want to come back anyway, regardless of what he might have said to somebody that's here today. If he came back, it'd be a mess. If he doesn't come back, it's a mess. But I will tell you this. We cannot just move forward. It isn't going to happen. It's impossible. I do not see a way forward without significant changes to how this board operates. What we do and who we do it with is going to be very important. Because you people are sitting in this room right now because you care. How many have come to a meeting here before? Really? <clears throat> Handful? How many of you are here because of this one issue? Most of you? You think they're going to go away just because we want to move on? We don't make some changes, folks. They're not going away. And they're the proof right now that there's no confidence in what we're doing. today that, that Charlie made a lot of friends and alliances in this community, uh, in, uh, primarily in the, in the waterfront, the, the fishermen with the uh, waterfront trades and the seafood industry. Uh, he had a great interest in that. He was very good at it. I applaud him for that. He was a, had a friendliness and approachability about him with, a, with the waterfront folks that we were probably lacking at the port. I understand that. Uh, I, I know that we've had directors in the past that were pretty much all business, and maybe that sometimes they didn't come across that form and friendly. But what Charlie did, and uh, he was great at that. There was other things that I, uh, as time went on, had problems with. I don't, I thought that, um, the direction, the leadership of the staff, the leader, and we don't have to have three old votes on everything. But it's clear that the staff was fractured and this commission was fractured. That it was just getting worse. Uh, and, you know, part of this is where you, where you are. I'm not saying Charlie was a bad guy. I'm saying that his experience was at a big port. And a big port is way different than a little port. It's, uh, he had never had any experience dealing with elected officials. He was not in that level at the Port of Seattle where he did that. Um, and you're dealing with a budget of hundreds of millions of dollars a year. 75 million alone in taxes. And I don't know how many hundreds of millions in, in their shipping industry and their uh, airport SeaTac operations. So it's the, the uh, scale and the volume is quite different than it is here. So I, we had some conflicts about some of the expenses and how some of this was done. Uh, but I, I think in the, what it really came down to was ultimately is um, 
is leadership for the staff and, and whether you can harmonize. If you have only one job that an executive director can do, it's to harmonize staff, getting them move in the same direction, and work with the commission so that even though you're not always going to be in the winning end of it, you feel like you had input, you had your say of this, that there was not other things going on that you didn't know about when the, when the time came. Now I just, you know, I'll, I'll take the responsibility for this. I, uh, early on, I was a big believer in Charlie Sheldon. I was the first one to talk to him before he was even brought into the candidate pool. I called him in Seattle. Um, he was looking for another job. He didn't want to leave Seattle immediately. His wife uh, had a new job with uh, Sound Transit, I believe. They owned a house in Ballard. And uh, he was not too interested. So we just talked general port things. And to his credit, he had been reading the newspapers up here. He knew about the waterfront. He had some interesting ideas about this that I agreed with. One of the, agree the ideas was that we had gone through this initial phase of high expectations on the waterfront. And there's a number of things conspired against us. Economy, political risk, um, just a lot of things that, that weren't going to happen in the term that we thought they were originally. And we both agreed on this. We said, we have staffed up to do a world-class waterfront. And this world-class is going to take a lot longer than we thought. We need to scale this back to see it just as, as waterfront that we can do in phases. And we need to cut expenses on these things. So it, based on that kind of early discussions I had with him, and his that sort of old mirror of personality, and he had some interesting stories. And not the least to say that we were about the same age, and I thought this was going to be an interesting time to spend with somebody that had been had as much experience up from a different angle than, as I have in the port industry, and that we were going to have a little cross-pollination between Port of Seattle and Port of Dollingham. That really didn't, that didn't gel as much as I had hoped for, and there were other th issues that came up, and typically the personnel issues don't get discussed in, in public, particularly with executive directors. Uh, this isn't like taking the payroll clerk and that you have to have written records and everything that happens and you find this and find that. That's not the way this is done with executive directors. In fact, for that reason, all executive directors are hired in an employment contract and they always have an escape clause. They always have some sort of a separation pay that uh, would kick in if they're asked to leave because they're employees at will. You don't have to go through any step phase. You don't. You just have to have lost the, the trust of the, of the majority of the commission. And it happens every year in this state uh, in ports, in fire districts, in school superintendents, anybody that works in basically for a commission or a board. That's, that's pretty much what happens. Now, to, just to make sure you understand that, that uh, Charlie was not terminated for cause, I think, as Mr. Carlberg said. And I know he said that in the paper, but I'm not sure why he said that. He was not terminated for cause. That's a whole different thing. He, he uh, probably felt at the next meeting that there was going to be a majority of the commission that would call, call for his resignation. So he preemptively called the court and said he would like to negotiate a settlement. Now, we already had part of the settlement in place because when he, he came on he had that in his employment contract. His interest was getting through uh, six months so that he could do, he could collect his uh, full public employee's pension and uh, and whatever other financial plans he had. I didn't know what that was. And that fit with what we, he told me two summers ago was when we first talked about this before he came into the pool. He said that he really, he would have to, he wasn't going to move here, that he was really looking to, for a job that lasted about 18 months to 24 months because he wanted to reach a certain deadline. That story changed later. That story changed later. I mean, Why are you kayaking for 18 months? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us another fairy. Why are you kayaking okay, well, for 18 months? No, I'm just telling you the conversation. I mean, so 
you know, as time goes on, everybody's story changes. But uh, anyway, so that's that's sort of what happened here. Uh, I think the, the the fact that you see a commission that doesn't operate very well together is uh, it's partly it's our fault. I, I accept the responsibility for that, but it's also the executive director who who can manipulate different points of view to each other and to make us see what's all in it. And uh, believe me, we've had some directors that have been very good at that. Nobody can believe you anymore, Scott. Nobody. Okay, well, so um, so that's what that's sort of where we are at the moment. Do you have any? Yes, I made a statement in the paper. I'm not sure it was exactly quoted as I said it, but I see John sitting there, so I'll be careful. Um, that I would give you an answer, that we as a commission would give you an answer why the decision was made that was made um, whenever that was, a couple weeks ago or a couple weeks ago. Um, Charlie, as Mike has said and as Scott has said, uh, really a pleasant person to be around and a great operator and got along with local folks as well as businesses and so on. It fits for me and that is a, a fractured staff and a fractured commission. And as a result of that, how, is, uh, how are you going to have meetings that uh, are not in, in a... But unified uh, taxpayers. I'm sorry? Unified taxpayers, and we're the ones who pay the bill. It seems, it seems like the public trust is at stake here. And you're putting staff ahead of the public's trust? Yeah. And I have a quote from Charlie that says he told you he would stay four to five years to finish the job. Well, you're fracturing the community. He's, he said he, well, you're not no. just fracturing staff. You're hey, fracturing the community. You lie to everybody. You lie to everybody. You lie to everybody. A bunch of liars. Nobody okay. can trust you anymore. Who are you talking to? To guys that lie to the public. Okay, well, do you want to take a break here or do we want to get finish this conversation. I just wanted to finish the conversation. Election's coming. Don't, don't worry about that. Three months. I would like to remark to what Mike said about two to one and three old votes. I don't agree with him at all. And that is the fact that when you have three old votes, I think you have a staff that is an excellent staff that explains to the commissioners what's going on, what's happening, what the event is, what the project is. And so all three commissioners agreed because it was well done. Every once in a while we have a two to one, not very often, but certainly we did on this issue. I don't think that uh, it would be good for Charlie to come back here with a situation that exists with staff and with the commission. I'm just telling you that's my feeling. And I, you know that I think highly of him, but I think it would be a real battle for him to be here and it would be an ongoing thing for I don't know how long, I have no idea, months maybe. And that, that makes it that much more difficult for the commission and for the staff to operate and cooperate. And he's been great to the public and I think that's wonderful. But we've had some fracturing, again using that word, whether that's good enough for you, I'm not sure. But that's how it happened and why it happened. How about a hatchet job? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> consider retiring and letting fight the battle. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well. Charlie, listen to the customer. If that's not proper for the sports culture, then there's something wrong. Listen, yeah. do, do we need to call a break in this, or can we move on here? I mean, if you want to sit and cat call from the audience, let's just take a break. Well, let's get through this. The fact is that, um, that I, the one thing I do, you know, we can't, we don't have to agree on everything. I understand that. And uh, sometimes I've been on the losing end of votes in this year, and sometimes I haven't. The one thing I disagree with, with Commissioner McCauley, though, is that not only can we move on, we have to move on. We have too many big projects here in front of the port. We have this waterfront redevelopment that we have to move forward on. I know there's been some people want to say that somehow that is fractured because of this. You really don't. You misunderstand how this waterfront plan has been moved forward. It's been done as a staff effort. The fact whether it's Charlie Sheldon or whether it's somebody else sitting at the table with the city, they've been making great progress. We don't see any 
any changes to that. The staff's still intact. We've, we've been working on these projects for seven years, long before I got here. So that's, that's a project. But you had here today, I'm talking about the airport. As we go into this master plan, I'm going to assume that as we get into the public hearing master plans, you're going to have as many people at the, at the meeting again. Probably not the same ones. But this is going to be a contentious issue. And we have gone out on a limb for this airport and the waterfront. We are stretched thin financially, which is the third big leg on this stool, is we have to really pay attention to where we're going and how much money we spend on different things. There's no, we cannot just go on as if it's never going to run out because of the changes that have happened. And so based on those kind of things, we have to move on. Now, the staff, my, my suggestion is, I've, been, I've never gone up and down the halls and asked anybody what they thought of their, their uh, boss. I've had people tell me, but I've never asked that because, but I've been here a long time. Some people know me better than they know the other commissioners. And so I've heard different things, but I've never gone up and down. I think it puts staff in a completely impossible position. I was up here yesterday to, for just a general meeting with, to get my weekly briefing. And it, this place looked like it was the inside of a penitentiary. There were people, everybody was stone-faced. Everybody was staring at the wall. It was commissioners going in and talking to everybody and trying to sort all this out. My advice, but I, and it's just my opinion, and just me, is for commissioners not to get involved with staff and, and let the staff resolve this stuff internally. <laughs> So that's my feeling is that we're going to have to move on. Rob Fix has already expressed he does not want to be the executive director of this board. He doesn't like the politics involved, and I don't blame him. Uh, we're going to have to search for a new uh, executive director. This is what I learned from the last time we did this. I, don't, I wouldn't support getting an outside search firm. I think that we have plenty of expertise in Elizabeth Monaghan to run a process. I think we've learned from the last one. I think that you're, one of the folks here said that uh, it might be difficult to recruit somebody. Yeah, somebody's, they're going to look at this and say what's going on. But, you know, there are some good people that, that want to be involved with this board and like this industry. And I think you will get a good candidate pool. So my advice at this to the to staff and the commission is, you need to, we need to put this behind us. We need to start a process looking for an executive director. We need to let the staff work with staff and get back to work and not having a, a hundred water cooler conversations about what the, the port commission is going to do. We should get back to doing what, what ports do. And I think we're suited to do that. We just need to get beyond this. Something that Scott mentioned that, that you folks need to know and we certainly need to know as a commission, and we have not followed those, that outline of, of regulations, and that is that the port commission is the, the king of the roof. I know you really think that today. But anyway, the top persons at the port are the commissioners. Next down, hierarchy, if you want to call it that. The next person down is the executive director, and the next person down are the uh, various directors of different departments, whether it happens to be environment or facilities or what have you and that means that if the staff has a problem with something they need to talk to the executive director who in turn talks to the court commission that has not been happening that has been mixed up and you've got commissioners talking to staff you've got staff talking to uh, over, over over the executive director yeah. and Staff talking with the commission over executive director and commission talking with the staff over executive director. That's how that executive director get out of his job. That is, that is not mistake of executive director. That is mistake of commission and staff. If you guys talking over the executive director and in that hire it's commission, executive director, then staff. That means Commission should talk with the executive director instead of talking with the staff over director. Chain of command. Well, yeah. Let's. The you want to talk to the staff? 
I thought it was what I said was clear. Maybe I mean, it Charlie has no power. He's the last guy in all that levels that you say: commission, okay. executive director, then staff. Well, executive we're, director we're not gonna is not there here. that time. No, you I, just go over. Here. My motion to uh, rescind our separation vote died. So there's no motion on the floor, and, and I won't. I won't belabor this anymore. I'll have plenty of time to talk to the press. And I'm a little bored. And you'll know, be seeing about this there. But I, I think what we've lost here is more than a game. And Scott and, and Jim and I, we seem to have different ideas about what's best for the community and, and moving forward and, and whatever that is. If, it, if I sound sad, I, I'm not sad. I'm, I'm befuddled. I, I, I don't get this. This this is the oddest thing I have ever seen, and I don't know I don't know what the good steps for. But I, I'll say again, there are clear issues here, and the changes will have to be made. And and this is certainly not the end of what's going on. And I disagree with you, Mr. Walker. There is no way we're just going to move forward. There is no way we're just going to move forward. Okay. All right. We move to aviation. Uh, Dan? 